Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Gaming On Board. My name's Josh. Tonight, I'm going to show you how to play a new game that's coming out sometime in 2019, and it's called Exploration by Damien Chorus. So this is a space exploration game where you are one of the major spaceports from around Earth trying to gain control of near-Earth outer space. So let's go down to the table and learn how to play Exploration. All right, so this is what Exploration looks like all set up. I'm not going to be able to show you all the components in one shot. I've got almost everything here. But let's take a quick look at the front cover. Some really cool artwork. You can see off in the distance what appears to be Earth and its moon, possibly. But anyways, we're exploring different areas. Here you can see uh, Earth and near-Earth outer space. So you've got our moon there, Mars over here, and these different uh, Lagrange points or Lagarian points, however you want to pronounce them. And there's actually some really cool science behind these L points uh, when it comes to gravitational pull on the far and near side of Earth or different planets, but uh, you should just check it out. So anyways, um, to start the game, each player will randomly select or select one uh, specifically the uh, spaceport that they want to use for the game. In this game, we ended up with uh, green and red, which is Cape Canaveral and Xicheng. And then you'll take a look at the spaceport that you ended up with, and you'll take your starting resources, which for green will be 12 zillions. That is the uh, currency of the game. So anytime you hear me say zillions, that's basically a dollar. Um, and they'll get one additional mission card, which will make sense here in a minute. And red will get 10 zillions and draw one development card. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, each player will also place markers on their board in two different spots. So down here on the spaceport card, you have your production track. Each player's production track will be the same. You'll start with six production, so you'll take one of your cubes and place it on the six. So that's how much money you'll earn at the beginning of every round, starting at round two. You do not gain zillions from production in round one. And then you'll also place another one up here at the top of the technology tree, where it says no bonus. And then as the game progresses, you'll move your way down the technology tree. And this will tell you which direction your ships travel in the orbit that you're uh, in. All right, so we'll go ahead and place a six there and one on the uh, top of the technology track for each of these. And then each player will also place one of their cubes on the zero spot of the scoring track, which I've already done. And a game of exploration lasts eight rounds. Again, everything you see here is prototype. This is not the final version of the game. Just keep that in mind. So the game will go to eight rounds where you see the comet written there on the board. So you just put this right here off of the one showing that we're starting at round zero. Um, then each player will also take mission cards. So each player will get three of these secondary mission cards. And they will also get two of these primary mission cards. And they'll choose one of these primary missions to keep and one to get rid of. So we'll just get rid of one each randomly, but you do get to choose what you want to get rid of. And then you keep these hidden from other players during the game because these will actually be, you know, your missions. So here is have one lander on the moon. You have to put certain landers on certain areas. One lander on L5, a rover module on any landing field, 
the highest amount of landers on Mars. See, the primary missions will give you victory points, and they're much harder to achieve. The secondary missions most always give you uh, money, zillions. So we each have three uh, secondary and one primary mission. And remember, the green player gets one extra mission card, so they'll choose to take another secondary mission. Um, so we've placed our starting cubes, got our three secondary missions, two primary missions, discarded one, and uh, we'll also be getting our money. So we're, uh, green will get 12, red will get 10, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. Next, we will begin uh, phase one of three. So there are three phases in each round, and each player will complete all three phases on their turn. So basically each player is going to have eight turns throughout the game, and you will do each of your three phases on your turn. The other portion of the setup, which is not specific to each individual player, uh, involves these different uh, decks. So this is the development card deck, and these have this back, and they are basically bonuses. So you can you can get uh, development cards through different ways, but I'll show you the main way later. On these development cards, you'll see a uh, card title, the tech level that's required to play that card, the cost for the card, and then the benefit down at the bottom. So again, you have your tech tree here on the player board. We all start at level one. You'll shuffle these up. Place them near the board. Shuffle the maneuver cards up. These are cards that you're going to be able to choose uh, to uh, improve the turn for your spaceships. So you'll take five of these from the deck, put the rest back in the box. Or actually, you set them nearby because there are some things that let you get additional maneuver cards. So these are the maneuver cards. They There will be basically a market of these out um, but these will be the only five cards you see during the game out available so on your turn uh, you'll get to choose and pay for one card for each of your spaceships and these cards will have a, a uh, card title up here at the top and the cost at the top right and then the effects down here at the bottom I know these don't mean much to you right now but you'll see that a little bit later on so you'll put these up here where all players can see them. There you go. So you can, every, all the players will be able to see those. All right, and then you will also shuffle the spaceship cards. And I'm not going to get into the details of the spaceship cards right now. But you'll see that here in a little bit when we talk about uh, purchasing and building spaceships. All right, and then finally, there is an uh, action card event deck. You'll shuffle these up. These are all bad things. And basically, when you land on different spaces on the board with this symbol here, right there, it looks like a radar kind of. Whenever you end your movement on that space, you'll have to draw one of these cards. Here's the title of the card. The effects are down at the bottom. And then the, the top right of these cards have this experience point symbol. And that's not a required cost. That's actually what you can spend to avoid the bad thing. So the experience points can help you avoid these bad events. Um, or you can hang on to them for uh, extra victory points at the end of the game. All right, so that's the complete setup. The player board setup, all the uh, cards shuffled and placed in their decks, the five maneuver cards out there at the top, and now we begin the first round. The first phase of every player's turn 
is the production phase. And we skip this phase in the first round. All the production phase is, is you increase your production level by one and then gain that many zillions. But like I said, in the first round, we do not do that. So we skip on to the uh, second phase, which is the preparation phase. The preparation phase uh, starts with, uh, well, there's six different steps of the preparation phase. And the first thing is to purchase a spaceship. To purchase a spaceship, you spend one uh, production point. And that means you're not spending the zillions themselves. You're moving your production track down one. And then you look at the top three cards of the spaceship deck. And you'll choose one of these spaceships and place it in your player area uh, so that you can build it later. So now that we're at this portion, I'm going to describe everything on these uh, spaceship cards. So here you, at the top you'll have the name of the spaceship, the um, speed, that's not the correct term, but um, the velocity, I believe, is what, it, is what it's called. So you'll have the velocity, that's how many spaces this ship can move. The maneuverability, which is basically like the dexterity of the ship, because to, to drop these different landers on the different areas, you'll have to use your maneuverability level, along with a four-sided die roll. So you'll look at your maneuverability, roll the die, look at any uh, modules you might have added to the ship, get the total, and compare it to the maneuverability required to drop the module that you're trying to drop. So that's what that is. Then the tech level that's required to build this ship. And then finally the cost to build the ship and the attribute of the ship. So there's, um, let's see, two, four, six, seven different types of ships. This one happens to be a, uh, like it says right there, a destroyer. So it's going to do um, two damage where normally a ship would only do one damage when attacking. Uh, then in this main art area, it'll show you what type of ship to take. And if you see over here, we have uh, seven different types of ships. So again, this is a prototype. So we're going to find the cardboard token that matches our ship. And each player will have four of these little standees here. So you'll take that, put it in the standee, and just set it off to the side because we haven't technically built it yet. Uh, in this art area, you'll also see a number of different cargo bays. So you see this one that requires tech level 2 and 9 to build has way more cargo area. And it's called a transporter for a reason because it has way more cargo bays than any of the other types of ships. But anyways, this one only has one, so it can only hold one module. Down here at the right, you'll see a energy track with a smaller border inside that energy track. So that tells you how many energy you start with. When you actually build this, you'll take one of these energy modules and place it to the far left of the starting energy track. And then as you use it, you'll move it down and then eventually off. And then over here, you have the resistance. So this, this ship can take three hits before it's destroyed. So it's, it's definitely a warship. It's not for transporting stuff. This guy can get out there and just beat up other. So here you go. Here's our three different choices. So two level two tech ships that are a little more expensive um, or this destroyer. So actually, I think we're going to take the, uh, the transporter. So it's a little bit faster, a little bit more maneuverability, some better shields, but we will have to get to tech level two first. So anyways, you'll choose one of those three, take that one, and then discard the others. That is phase one. <laughs> that is the first part of phase two, rather. All right, so then after you've chosen to either purchase a spaceship or not, you will plan your orbital maneuver. And that's when these maneuver cards come into play. These five cards that we put up here, 
that are available to everyone. So you'll take a look at these. And so your satellite receives another turn. Satellite, again, this is a prototype. Satellite means spaceship. So you could spend five bucks, assign this to that spaceship, and it would get to take two turns this turn, which is really good. Uh, add module to sat. Okay, so you'd add a module to a spaceship on the general orbit, which is the orbit around Earth. There's an Earth orbit, there's a Moon orbit, and there's a Mars orbit. Um, you need no space for it, but you must pay its price. So you get to add an additional module to a ship. So like that ship we were looking at that only had one cargo bay on it, you could pay two bucks for this maneuver card, add another uh, module to that ship without having an open cargo bay. But you still have to pay for it, which is still really good. So this one's only a dollar. It slows the ship down by two, which sometimes is a good thing. And you'll see why here in a little bit. Um, but it adds two energy to it. So it gives you the energy you need to modify the ship's trajectory and uh, might get the speed closer to where you want it to be. And then this one's one. It's going to speed the ship up quite a bit and take one energy away. And then this one's a two dollar one. You get one speed, one energy. So those are our, those are our options. You get to choose one of these per spaceship. So let's just take. Uh, we're not going to get. Yeah, we're going to take this one so we can take another turn immediately. Because when you launch a spaceship, you can't move it that same turn. It can only move locations once per turn. But this will give it another turn. So we set this with the spaceship we want it to go with, and pay five bucks. So one, two, three, four, five. Three, four, five. Here's a close up of the of the zillion tokens. There you go. So that cost us five. So we should have seven left. Four, five, six, seven. Alright, so that was part two of uh phase two, which is preparation. So we've uh, purchase spaceship, we plan our orbital maneuver, now we're going to plan development if we want, again, you can pay, oh, sorry for the blur, uh, you can pay one production point and draw one of those development cards. Um, and I don't think, yeah, let's go ahead and do it just so you can see. So we pay one development, or one production point, so we're down to four now. Draw the top card of the development deck. Let's see what we got. Tech level two. It costs six bucks to play, but it'll give us two experience points, which are good for avoiding those bad events, and two victory points. So we get this. It doesn't activate or anything. We just get it, put it in our player area right here under our board there, and that's available to us for later use. Next, you can increase your technology level, and guess how much it costs? One production point. That's right. Um, so we definitely need to do that because remember our ship requires a tech level 2 and we're only at level 1 now and we won't even be able to get to level 2 this turn so we'll pay one more production po point we're down to 3 and increase our technology level let me show you the, the significance of increasing your technology so we started at no bonus right so when we move down here we immediately get an experience point like I said, really good in-game points and avoiding bad stuff. So then after that first little movement, you have a choice. And you can only increase your technology by spending a production point once per turn. You can't just spend all your production points and fly down the technology track. So once per turn, you can pay a production point to increase your technology level. But after this first one, we have to make a choice. We can either go to the left or the right... And these are permanent upgrades. So if we go to the left, all of our ships will have plus one energy for the rest of the game. And then once we get here, all of our ships will have plus one maneuverability. Over here, they'll all get plus one shield or resistance for the rest of the game. And then here, any time you take an action that would earn you victory points, you also earn uh, one zillion. So it's an extra way of making money every time you earn victory points. And then finally, regardless of the path you go down, these continue for the, till the end of the game. When you get here, you get to draw another secondary mission card, which is more opportunity for money. 
And then finally, you've got one more decision to make at the bottom. So you can either draw a free development card, which as you can see I've been could be really good. Or you can unlock landing on the comet. And that means only you can land on the comet. And let me show you why that's a good thing. Let's uh, zoom into the comet here as much as we can without messing anything up here. So this is the comet. So when you're on this spot or this spot, you can land uh, any module there. And then at the end of the game, if you have one uh, module on the comet, you get five points. If you have one in each spot, it's worth 12 points. So just by controlling the comet, that could literally win you the game. That's a 12-point opportunity that no one else will have. So yeah, that's the last space there on the technology track. All right. So then, uh, just to recap what we've done in the preparation phase, we have purchased a ship for one production point. We chose our orbital maneuver card for the ship. We paid one production point for a development card for use later. We paid one production point to increase our technology level. And then you have the opportunity to actually increase your production. So you've been spending all this <laughs> production, all these production points to do all this different stuff. But you can get some of it back. So each production point you want to increase will cost you four zillions. So you could pay four to increase it one, eight to increase it two, 12 to increase it 3, and so on and so forth. So let's see, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, let's just do it 1. Here's 4 to bring us back up to 4 production. Because remember, starting round 2, this is going to move up 1, and then we'll get some more money back. Alright, and then finally, the last thing you do during the preparation phase is going to be building your spaceship. So you, first you just purchased it for the production, now you're going to actually build it. This one requires tech level 2, so we're not going to be able to build it. Let's just fast forward the game a little bit. Let's say I went this way to give my ship some extra energy for the rest of the game. And now I want to build this. And obviously this would have gone up 1, I would have got 5 zillions. Let's just say I got a few more for finishing one of my uh, mission cards. So anyways, uh, tech level 2, there I am, and I'll pay $9, and this is now technically built. So I'll take the ship, put it into my little uh, standee there, again this is a prototype version, so you won't be using this, and you'll place it on your spot on the map. So there's my green there's red, blue, and then the uh, tan color there. So my green ship goes there. And this is where we have the opportunity to buy modules. So like I said, you'll take an en uh, energy module and put it on the leftmost space of this inner border. And then a uh, resistance token. You could put one on each each of these or on the leftmost and just slide it down as you take damage. But anyway, so these cargo bays give you opportunities to increase your ship's stats or add modules that you're trying to deliver to complete mission cards. Also, this is where you're going to be thinking about a lot of the scoring for the game. So let's go take a look at the map real quick and some of these mission cards. Alright, so let's take a look at the map and see what opportunities we have for scoring points from area control. And area control is done by taking these different uh, you know, modules that you can add to your cargo bays and delivering them to these spots on the map. So here you can see Mars, the Moon, and some of these Lagrange or Lagarian points and how many points you get for each. So you see, uh, if you have, you know, uh, let's see, here's a one, two, three, four, five 
landers on Mars, you get different numbers of points. So if you have one, it's seven, two is 15, three is 26, four, five, so on. There's four spots at the moon, five at Mars, five different L points, and the comet down here. So um, this is where you're building your ship during the preparation phase. So you need to look at how many cargo spots you have, okay, and the maneuverability of your ship and how quickly you're going to be able to move around. So there are four different types of special modules, and those are rovers, which can only be placed on the moon, telescopes, which can only be placed on the L points. Then we have habitats. These can only go on Mars. And then these are GNSS, like a satellite communication modules. And the GNS mod GNSS modules can be placed in any uh, orbit, I believe. And once you place a special module, you'll take one of your player tokens and put it on that spot, and it can never be destroyed. Um, it's there for good. So you've, you've controlled that one spot. So, you know, as you deliver these different modules, you're guaranteeing yourself a certain number of victory points at the end of the game. And you'll also be looking at your primary and secondary mission cards, which will give you some direction. So land a rover module on any landing field. So that means land a rover on the moon, because remember, rovers go on the moon. Have a lander on the moon. So there's uh, another one. So there's 20 bucks for getting a rover on the moon. Put a satellite on Mars. That means put a spaceship on Mars. Again, this is a prototype. Uh, have one lander on L5. So put a telescope on L5. That'll get you 12 bucks. And then the hard one is have the highest amount of landers on Mars. So you want the most habitats on Mars at the end of the game. And that one will get you... Uh, what, eight victory points. So as you complete these, you'll reveal them to the players and gain the benefit in the bottom right. So you'll use your mission cards to try to make the best decision you can while building your ship about what modules you need. And the uh, modules also vary in price. So in addition to the special modules that you'll be using to drop on different places, there's also these basic uh, like ship modifier modules that are one dollar each and these are really basic uh, this will increase your velocity or speed by one this will increase your maneuverability by one and you'll see why maneuverability is important here in a second when we get into the third phase and then this will increase your shield or your resistance and this will increase your energy those are one dollars a piece or one one zillion a piece the uh, GNSS modules are also one zillion the uh, telescopes are four, the moon rovers are three, and the habitats are five. So you gotta, you got to think about all this while you're building your ship. So I saw that we had some, uh, some goals having to do with the moon, so we'll definitely pick up uh, a couple of rovers, right? So we'll grab two of these rovers and place them on our ship like so so that'll take up two of the spots on our ship we got pretty good resistance we got a good amount of energy our velocity is good and our maneuverability is pretty good but you can always use more maneuverability so we'll go ahead and add two maneuverability so that's two bucks for the maneuverability the rovers are three dollars a piece so we owe eight dollars for building this ship so let's head on back over here and pay for our modules. Oh, yeah, so this is going to cost us a whopping eight. So here's the zillions. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. So we have successfully built our ship. So now that we've built it, we'll place our uh, token here on our color spaceport and we are ready for phase three which is exploration the exploration phase this is where we're going to be moving around
So, if you remember, during the preparation phase, we purchased this maneuver card, which allows us to move our spaceship again. Basically, the spaceship gets two turns instead of one. During the exploration phase, you have a few options, and you can do these in any order and as many times as you would like, but you can only move the location of your spaceship once. You can only change the location once. So if you're at the spaceport, your only option is to launch. So you'll launch your ship, which moves it to the closest space. The arrows are pointing clearly right to the space. And that's it. You can't move that ship again until your next turn. Um, but we purchased this, so we immediately get another turn, and now we have some choices to make. If your spaceship is low on energy, I'm just going to use this from now on. So if you were completely out of energy, you could stay where you're at, skip your movement, and gain one energy. That's one option. Another option is to uh, transfer modules from one ship to another. So if I had another ship right here next to this ship, and just say this one had uh, two maneuverability modules, and this guy's heading over to drop some off at Mars, and he knows he's going to need more maneuverability, you could transfer those to any empty cargo slots on the other ship. Uh, another option is to change your orbital direction. So remember, each uh, spaceport has a, a base orbital direction. In this case, it's counterclockwise. You could choose to spend one energy um, and change your orbital direction. So I could change it from counterclockwise to clockwise for that ship. So you just place this on the ship card so you'd know that ship's going in a different orbital direction. And then finally, uh, the actual movement options are a normal flight or a precise flight. So a normal flight, you would look at the velocity or speed of your ship here, which is this orange rocket symbol, and you would move exactly that number of spaces in your orbital direction. So in this case, it would be counterclockwise, so I would have to move exactly seven spaces. So it would be in this direction, but I can go out before I head that way. So if I wanted, I could go off this way, but I could go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But it has to be exactly seven. That's the normal flight. Or you can do a precise flight, which you would spend one energy, and you could fly anywhere from one to your velocity number. So from in this ship's case, it would be one to seven. So I could move one or two or three, four, five, six, up to seven. So it costs you an energy, but you can get exactly where you're trying to go instead of having to go the full velocity number. And uh, so those are the two movement options. And then also in the exploration phase, this is where you're going to be dropping these modules off. And remember, this is how you get area control. This is how you score points at the end of the game. This is how you complete these mission cards. So this is very important. Um, so let's just uh, emulate a turn here. I get another movement. Um, I'm trying... Let me see what, what were my missions. I'm trying to get to the moon. So let's say I'm going to head up this way. My orbital direction is this way. So if I go over here, I won't be able to backtrack that way unless I reverse my orbital direction. So I want to come up around this way. So let's just do a normal flight, exactly seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's where I would end up. I can't really do anything there. And there's no spots on the board that cause anything to happen. You'll notice all these different symbols on the board. Let me tell you what these do. So if you land, like end your movement on the space with this symbol, you'll have to draw one of these event cards from the top left here. And they're always bad, like I said at the beginning. So if I landed on that spot, I would draw this. All players who have not landed on Mars lose four zillions. Um, so <laughs> this early in the game, that's everybody. Um, so, Or I could pay one experience point. And remember, I have an experience point because I increased my technology to avoid this. And it would just go face down to the bottom of that deck. And we wouldn't have to worry about it. Okay, the other spot on the on the on the board 
are the experience points. So if you end your movement on one of these space, you immediately get an experience point. And then finally, the zillion markers basically tell you if you pass over or land on a spot with a zillion marker, you get one zillion. So if you, if you cross over four of these things during your movement, you'll get four zillion. So that's pretty good. So for the most part, they're good, but there's a lot of those event spots. Okay, so that's, that's what could happen during your movement. But let's talk about special module drops. This is really the, the bulk of the game right here is, let's say it comes back around to me. I have another movement, and I'm trying to drop off here at the moon. You'll see these spots with these arrows going into these areas. So that means you have to be in one of these spots that has arrows pointing into that special point to be able to drop a satellite there. Your ship doesn't have to be on that spot, just on one of these spots that's pointing to it. So let's just say it's my next turn. This ship that I'm using actually has a velocity of 10. So... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'll just do a normal movement. Boom. Land right there. And remember, I have two of these rovers on my on my ship here. So I'm going to attempt a special module drop. So to attempt a module drop, you'll take a look at this, uh, this uh, chart in the rule book. And this will clearly show you what each module requires in order to be successful. So we're trying to drop a rover that takes a maneuverability level of 6. So we take a look at our ship. We have a base maneuverability of 3 and we have two additional maneuverability modules. So we now have a base maneuverability of 5. We roll the four-sided die and we ended up with a 2. So we add the 2 to our 5, which is a 7. A 7 is greater than the required 6 to drop a rover. So we have successfully dropped a rover on the moon. So we'll take one of our player pieces, put it on that spot, and discard the rover uh, module from our spaceship. And when you... Uh, successfully drop a special module there's bonuses that come along with it so for this rover you'll see here we'll get three victory points and six zillions so we'll move up here on the on the uh, victory point track one two three and we'll get our six zillions if we wanted to we could have dropped both of those rovers at the same time to get twelve a zillions and six victory points but I think we're gonna hang on to it because remember this is also area control so if we control two spots on Mars that's worth 10 victory points instead of just getting that extra three right now um, so that's well that that's an example of a success there's also um, a success uh, that's actually a draw so if so we had a base of five maneuverability if we rolled a one that would have put us at six which is just enough so we would still drop the module but our ship would lose one energy and if the result was lower than six we were unsuccessful our spaceship would lose one energy and we'd be forced our spaceship would be pushed one space in the direction of our uh orbit you know our orbital direction so if we failed this would not go here and we get pushed this direction which in this case gives us a a, a experience point so that's cool um, but you could have landed on an event which is bad all right so that's a special module drop and then finally you can do a gnss drop there's no special points for gnss drops um, you could drop them anywhere except for the moon and mars orbits uh, but of course, you know, they can be destroyed very easily. But you do still get one victory point and one zillion when you do that. Um, and then finally, when we're talking about the exploration phase and moving around, it's important to mention that there's a couple spots on the board that actually go off 
into outer space. So, and those are going to be the ones here on the very outside. This one here. And this one way up here, which actually go off of the board. And whenever you go off of the board into outer space, you you actually um, receive bonus points for that too. So you'll get a development card for free and five victory points. So, you know, that's, that's a good thing to think about too. You can just go off the edge of the board to uh, rack up some extra victory points. Um, and then that would be the end of the exploration phase, but you also have opportunities to attack other ships. So if the enemy had a ship on the board here too, and I could bump into him, that's how you attack. So, you know, if I was right here coming up around this way, boom, 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 I ran into him, he would lose one of his uh, resistance. So he would move this resistance down one. And then if he had no resistance left, he would actually be destroyed. And the victor would gain one frag token. Again, this prototype doesn't have frag tokens, but I'm just using these cool dice to keep track of frag tokens. Frag tokens are worth five victory points at the end of the game. So basically, every victory you have is also going to score you five victory points. Um, and the loser, the one that was destroyed, gains an experience point. Uh, so there's there's something to that too. So um, and then you know if you're not destroyed and you just lose one resistance. So if he was hit, he was resistance would go down one, and then you'd have to move one point. Uh, in your orbital direction. So the same as if you failed on a special module drop. So let's say he comes around here, boom, hits him. I'd have to move, you know, one in my orbital direction. So he's basically hitting you and then knocking you back. And then there's there's combined attacks too, you know, where there's, uh, there's two spaceships engaged in a normal attack, and only after the defending spaceship moves one point according to orbit, it does another attack. So... <laughs> this could actually happen. Say there's another ship right here. This guy attacks him. He takes one damage and then boom, bumps into this guy. And then it causes another attack. So, uh, but in this situation, only the initial spaceship receives experience points for each impact. So, there you go. Um, and then, you know, there are ships... They have different abilities. Like we looked at the one that was a destroyer. So if a destroyer hits you, you actually take two points of damage instead of just one. Here we go. Here's a destroyer. So if a destroyer hits a ship, instead of just doing one, uh, one resistance subtraction, you would do two, and the defender would get two experience points. So one experience points... One experience point for each damage that your ship takes. And then if you're destroyed, your attacker gains a frag token, which is worth one or five victory points at the end of the game. Yeah, so that is how attacking works and all of that. And that is a full turn. That is uh, phase one, two, and three. So you've got the production the preparation where you get your ships, your maneuverability, your tech, increase your production, get your development cards, and then exploration where you're moving around, dropping the special modules, um, claiming your area control, attacking other ships, different things like that. And then finally, at the end of the game, you will score victory point based on these tables all over the board. So the L points are actually split up into five different tables, but it could be viewed as one table. So if you control one L point, it's worth two. Two L points is worth four. Three L points is worth seven. Four is 12. And if you control all five L points, it's worth 20 points at the end of the game. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, and so what you'll do is you'll, you'll add up all your victory points for your area control. So how many 
you have on the moon, how many you have on Mars, how many L points you control, how many GNSS survived the game because they're so easily destroyed. You know, you just bump into them and they're destroyed. Um, and then if you have any control of the comet, then you also score for that. Finally, you'll score any uh, primary mission cards that you may have completed. In this case, this would give us eight victory points if we had the most habitats on Mars. And then you would be able to exchange resources in the following way. One experience point is worth three victory points at the end of the game. You also get one victory point for every ten zillions you have at the end of the game. And finally, like I said, each frag token you have, so basically each victory in combat you've had, is also worth five victory points. Once you uh, add up all those points, whoever has the most victory points is the winner and has gained control of enough of near-Earth outer space to claim to be the superpower on Earth and the LaGrange Master. <laughs> So there you go. That's how you play Exploration by Damien Chorus. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to check out Gaming On Board on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching and play all the games.